HitFilm Sensei here. Today, in this video, we're going to chisel text out of pure stone. So now, before we do this, I want you to know that I actually have uploaded this project file to the marketplace, and I will leave a link in the description below. But you should definitely go through this tutorial with me so that you understand how it's built and then how powerful it can be to modify and change the different things that are in there, okay? So we're going to start by creating a new composite shot, and I'm only going to make this six seconds long. Well, let's make it eight seconds long, just to be sure. And this will be the final shot, okay? In the final shot, what we're going to do is we're going to build what we are going to etch out first, and then we're going to build the texture that we are etching it out of, okay? So I'm going to start by creating a new composite shot, and this will be the text placeholder, all right? And I will click OK, and in the text placeholder, I can add a new text layer, and I'm just going to let you know that as I'm doing this, you can make this text any size, any um, uh, font, any, uh, you know, justification. It, it doesn't matter. It's just a placeholder for what you're going to end up shattering out of there, okay? So in the final shot, I'm going to drag my text placeholder in, and I am going to hide it. Okay, all right, now I'm going to create a new composite shot, and this will be the texture placeholder. Oh, I guess I better do this. Texture placeholder. And again, I can place any texture I want. In this case, I'm going to use this cement texture that I got from my good friend Eric Matias over at soundimage.org, and I'll leave a link in the description for that below as well. All right, so I'm going to bring in my texture placeholder, and I am going to rename it Shatter, okay? And this will be what we are actually going to shatter out of the uh, text around or texture around it. So first thing I need to do is I need to find the set matte effect. I'm going to drag that in and then I'm going to open it up and source the text placeholder. So now what we have is the text from the text texture placeholder and the text from the text placeholder mixing together so that you have that texture inside of that text. Okay. Next, I'm going to find the shatter effect. And the shatter effect, I'm going to drag underneath the set matte effect, okay? And if we take a look at it, you'll see that there are lots of different things that you can do to it. So we're going to do some basic modifications. We're going to start by going to the physics folder, and we're going to open up forces, all right? And the first thing you're going to notice is, see how that is shattering here? is that this is not very big. It's only 200 pixels in radius. So I'm just going to expand this until it is plenty big. Eh, 3,000. I mean, we got to really make sure that it's large, okay, so that it shatters all of that, okay? And I want the strength to be something greater than 500. I'm going to set it to about 1,500, but you could set it to whatever you like. Under gravity... Gravity is the fact that it then pulls it down. It falls downward, okay? Under gravity, I'm going to go ahead and set the gravity to 1,500 as well, okay? So it's strong, as, as strong as the other thing. But you'll notice that when, it, when the stuff falls, it kind of stays there. That's because there's a floor there, and the floor distance is set at 750, and I just want to set that to a really high number so that it doesn't end up landing on, you know, somewhere in the shot. If I had a picture of my house here and I had a yard in front and I wanted them to land there on the yard, then it'd be a different story. But I don't, so I wouldn't I'm gonna make sure that's out of here, okay? Under the pattern, you can see that it, the type is bricks, okay? And they make little bricks. You can also use hexadecimal or hexagonal, I mean, which is more like uh, stones, and that's what I'm going to end up using. You can change the size of those, 
However, I'm not going to do that. You can also change the extrusion or how thick they are. Uh, and I'm not going to do that either. I'm just going to leave it at 10 and 15. Okay. So that way I have my shattering going on there. Okay. Under simulation, rotation speed is how quickly they spin as they shatter out. I'm going to go ahead and up that to the max. And then randomness, I'm going to up that to the max too. So it's really a chaotic explosion of rocks, okay, flying all over the place. Yeah, that looks really cool. Okay, so that is essentially the shatter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build the part around it, okay? So what I'm going to do is go back to the media, and I'm going to bring back in my texture placeholder, but this one I'm going to call background, and I'm going to search for the parallax effect, and I'm going to drag it in the background, and I am going to source the text placeholder again, okay? So now, if I get rid of the shatter, you say, well, I can't really see uh, that. And you're right, because it, it's there, but it's really hard to see, okay? What you need to do now is add a new light. It's going to ask if you want to add a camera, and the answer will be yes. Uh -huh. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this light forward a little bit. Not the camera, but the light forward a little bit. So that way you can see where it's etched in. Okay. Now, if I bring back the shatter, you can see that that fills in that place. Okay. And boom, then it explodes. Right. So it's all there. All right. And that's it. Now, if I go back to the shatter effect again, and under the um, timing of the shatter effect, right, if I set that to say one second, Okay, and then I set the end of it to say uh, five seconds, right? Then it won't shatter until one second happens, okay? And it'll be all done for sure by five seconds, okay? Now, if I want it to all shatter at once, then I'm good to go here. But if I want it to shatter only parts at a time, we can create a shatter map, a timing map, I mean. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to say new composite shot, and I'm going to call this a timing map. All right, and clicking OK. I'm going to make this real simple. I'm going to drag a plane into the timing map, and I'm just going to find the color gradient effect, and I'm going to drag it in here, and this will show you. So you'll see it's kind of black up here, right? and it's white down here, and then it's gray in between, okay? Because that's my color gradient, how it's set up. If I go back to my final shot, and under the shatter effect, if I go ahead and source, oh wait, first I have to, of course, drag in the timing map, and I don't want it visible, so I'm going to turn it off. Then if I go to the shatter, and I source the timing map, then what's going to happen, remember it was black up here, it was white down here. What that tells the software is wherever it's black, go ahead and shatter at one second. Wherever it's white, go ahead and shatter at five seconds. If it's somewhere in between, then you'll shatter somewhere in between those two numbers. So it's going to start by shattering the black area up here first, and then in between areas, and finally at the very end, it'll shatter the very end. Okay, so that's pretty much how you'd get it to shatter across, you know, this way. Okay, easy enough. All right. Now, if I wanted this to be deeper, then I would go into my background parallax effect, and I would just increase the depth of that. Okay, I'm not going to, but, you know, you can change that. If I want it to be shallower, then I can change that as well okay so there there's the different ways of making that and of course you probably would want to uh expand the extrusion size here in the shatter effect also right all right now what if i told you that we could make this entire apparatus three-dimensional that'd be pretty cool wouldn't it so i'm going to create a new point layer and it's going to be the 3D control point, all right? And I'm going to make that three-dimensional. 
under the shatter effect, I'm going to say position, the very first folder position transform from that 3D control point. Okay. And then under the background, I'm just going to go ahead and make it into a 3D plane, plane and parent it also to that 3D control point. So now you can see that it is shattering like this. Okay, but if I were to open up the 3D control point and start rotating or turning it, it will actually act in three-dimensional space here. Okay, which is really cool. So you could do an awful lot of pretty neat stuff here, right? Now, if I rotate it all the way around so you could see the backside of it, you'll see it's sticking out the backside, right? This is a genuinely parallax extruded thing. And you can see that it's shattering on the back of it too, right? So you could come up with probably an awful lot of really neat old stuff here with regards to how you would make that look, okay? Now you can change the lighting on this to get it to look however you want and so on and so forth, okay? Now here's the other thing that I want to tell you, and that is, is that I can change the timing map. It doesn't have to be a gradient. For example, maybe if I added a fractal uh, noise effect to it, and then I made this, instead of cubic, I made it block, right? Perhaps I change the scale of this a little bit. So parts of it are black, parts of it are white. This would sort of create a random kind of a gunshot uh, sort of a, of a look, right? So now it's sort of, you know, there and there and over here and over there. And it's sort of randomly doing it, right? A little bit here where it's black, right? A little bit more where it's, you know, uh, kind of gray. And then at the very end, the last pieces of it, you know, when it's where it's white, right? So I could build my own uh, timing map if I wanted to in terms of, uh, you know, figuring out where I want it. So if I wanted this H to go first and this E, you know, that kind of a thing, right? So easy, easy, All right? Also, what if I told you that I wanted it to just all blow up at once? Well, then I could make it all just sort of at the same time, right? Okay. Now, what if I told you also that it doesn't have to be text, but it could be something else? For example, a Death Star. Yeah, that's a pretty cool looking deal, isn't it? So we come back here. Now, what would happen? We have a Death Star. So it doesn't have to be text, but it could be any picture that you want. Okay, now if you want it to only be in that one piece, you want to make sure it's transparent around the back side of it. But pretty pretty easy to, to really make almost any kind of a thing happen. That could be a moving video. Okay, this background could be anything that you wanted it to be. It does not have to be a picture. It could be a moving video. It could be the picture of the side of my house, right? It doesn't really matter. So pretty much in a nutshell, that's how you do it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And again, I'll remind you that you can download this project file on the marketplace. It's in the description below. And hey, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday and Monday, and thanks for your support.